dear. Oh, b it's gone. Good morning everybody and welcome to another video. Now I apologise in advance for the introduction to this video. Um, it really just designed to grab your attention which is the exact opposite really of what I'm going to be trying to do in this video today. What I wanted to do today is take you with me while I do some stalking of wildlife which is something I do quite a lot of. Um, it's one of the techniques that is really one of the most difficult to, to master as regards um, trying to get images and, and get good sightings of wildlife but it's one of the most rewarding when you get it to work so that's what I thought to, I'd do today also what I'm going to try and do today is I'm always saying on these videos that I'll take you with me um, on these videos I'm going to use a an action camera so that um, I'm going to have that on my body at all times while I'm doing this walk through this woodland here and so you'll be more or less seeing what I'm seeing so Hopefully I'll intertwine that with the video as well in part. Um, obviously I'm not going to do that all the way through because it would be probably quite boring for you. But what I'm also going to do is give you my top um, tips that I think will help you to be successful in this type of photography. And um, yeah, maximise your chances of seeing and photographing wildlife. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So what do you need to wear for this style of photography? Well. To get close to wildlife, obviously that was an extreme example I put at the start there. You want to try and use drab colours um, that match with the environment that you're in. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to wear something like this, which uh, what I'm wearing at the minute is a, a Jack Pike Rannock jacket. It's one of my favourite jackets at the minute. Not only because it's, it's camouflage, but also because the material it's made out of is very quiet. And what I mean by that is when I'm walking, it's, there's not a lot of noise coming from it so some materials you can get when you're walking they can be quite noisy and I want to try and cut down as, on that as much as possible but any sort of drab jacket that you've got that matches with the environment that you're going into is going to be, be good enough really you don't have to go to this extent as you can see I'm just wearing normal walking trousers that are, are green most walking trousers these days tend to be this type of colour and that's what you want to look for as I say you don't have to have camouflage stuff that's going to be fine. I tend to cover my hands with gloves so um, these are quite extreme because obviously they camouflage and they've also got sort of a leaf effect on the backs of them as well. You don't have to go to this extent. Something simply like just a normal glove in a, a brown or a green or a grey or a black is going to is serve your purpose fine. Also you can use face coverings as well. I don't tend to do that. Um, simply because a lot of the time I'm doing videos as well so it will be pretty difficult for me to speak to you. We've all got used to using masks um, over the last couple of years with uh, the situation that we've been in so um, it's difficult enough to speak to people when you're wearing one of those so trying to do a video at the same time but you know I find that normally I've got a camera in front of my face a lot of the time anyway so I don't tend to bother with that but I do cover my hands because I think that animals when they see a, a hand it, it's associated with a human um, and you know they, as the more that you can sort of disassociate yourself from being that bipedal thing standing up which is what most animals will associate a person with and then that will cause them to scatter so the more that you can get away from that the better. As regards what I take with me when I'm um, stalking wildlife obviously you're going to have to have your camera and it goes without saying I don't try, try generally not to take a lot more than that other than the clothes I'm wearing. When you're stalking wildlife you have to be quiet, you don't want to be carrying a lot of stuff around with you that potentially can drag onto stuff that in the event of you finding wildlife it may be that you need to then act quickly so once you've found it it might be a case of getting down on the floor quickly. You don't want stuff on your back that's going to inhibit you doing that or cause you have to put things down. So what I generally do is just take a bean bag with me. The reason I take a bean bag is obviously when I'm on the floor I can lay the camera on it and if I'm trying to film as well, um, it's really my only way of getting some filming done. Um, 
as you probably know, normally when I'm filming wildlife, I'll use a, a tripod with a, a fluid head on it. It's just impossible really when you're stalking wildlife to, to use that technique, at least because obviously what you, you've got to do is you've got to get your camera onto the fluid head. You've got to set your tripod up. You've got to level it. That is really impossible when you've got potentially wildlife walking towards you, say down a woodland ride, you can't suddenly stop, take your tripod off your bag, start doing the legs, um, you know, fit the thing on the top, the, tr the camera on the top, get it all levelled and expect the animal still to be walking towards you. All that is going to just mean that the animal is going to disappear. You need to get down on the floor as quickly as you can. And with a bean bag, at least it's the next best method if I'm filming to get some footage. So that's what I'll do. Um, so in this instance, I'm not taking a bean bag. That's simply because I'm filming. So I've got to take extra equipment that I wouldn't normally take if I was just out stalking wildlife. But because I'm making this YouTube video, I've got extra cameras, extra sound gear. So what I've, I've done is I bring out this, it's an old wildlife watching supplies seat. So basically you would unzip the sides here and then there's a base for you to sit on and a, a back for you to lean against while you sat on the floor. But what I've found is obviously I've, I've put this carrying strap on it so I can throw it over my back. It provides like a nice little pouch where I can put my extra camera in my sound gear, which means that I can carry that and I've not got any zips. So if I was carrying a rucksack, I might have Velcro, I might have uh, zips to undo if I'm trying to get stuff out, oh, which is going to make more noise. So yeah, it's a handy idea, something like this, just to carry so that you can slide things out easily without making any noise. And that, I found that perfect for when I'm doing a YouTube video and trying to be uh, minimalist in a way of the stuff I carry but I have to carry stuff and I don't want to carry a, a, a rucksack or a camera backpack. So that's what I'm going to be carrying today. Other than that it would normally be a bean bag and the camera. So with that in mind let's get into this woodland, let's get uh, quiet and let's see if we can find some wildlife to photograph. So I'm onto a woodland ride here. What I'm going to do? Stalking is all about. Obviously, you're walking, but you're walking at a much slower pace than you would normally walk, say, if you were just having a walk in the countryside. I'm probably going at less than 25% of the speed I would normally go. And that's simply because you need to be careful about where you place every footstep every time you put your foot down there's a potential to put it on a stick that's going to snap like a, a pistol shot and the moment that you do that any animals in the area are going to be alert to that fact and uh, once they're alert you've got very little chance of creeping up on them so You've really got to slow yourself down. So while you are stalking, as I say, you're having to watch where you put your feet, so you're looking down at the ground a lot. But you're multitasking, so you're also looking. You can't just look at your feet all the time because you've got to watch out for wildlife. And not just wildlife directly in front of you, to the sides, even potentially behind you. So that's why you have to be so slow and deliberate because you're having to constantly switch between doing those things. Which isn't easy, it's very mentally tiring this. So I'm going to shut up for a bit and just see if we can find anything in this woodland. When I come to a, a long ride like this one you can see in front of me, what I'm always trying to do is, if I can, is try and stay to the side of the path. That's often difficult because it's quite similar to a, a road, if you like. The central part of the path where everybody walks is where it's more clear of sticks and twigs and it's easier to walk on, easier to be quiet. However, if I'm on a long run like this, where I can see probably 100 metres ahead, if something appears on the path coming round the corner and looks directly down the path, potentially it's going to seem, if I'm in the middle of the path, I'm stuck. If I'm slightly to the edge, I always have that chance of just 
stepping off and then getting down and then potentially the animal hasn't seen me and it's going to continue walking down the track towards me and I can get down on the floor and just be waiting for it whereas if I'm in the middle any movement from the middle to the side potentially it will see me and it'll veer off the path and go into the wood and it'll never come down towards you so always try and think of that if you can it's a, it, you're always weighing it up well you know what's going to be the best advantage for you if it's really really sticky and twiggy and noisy on the edge it may not be worth it but always consider trying to keep to the edge if you can so that you can easily get under cover if you need to when I'm coming out to do this I even consider what I've got in my pocket so say I put a lens cap in my left hand pocket and then I put my car keys in there potentially every time I walk that's going to be jangling against each other so I'm always even careful what I put in my pocket so that I know that that's not going to make a noise either hopefully these little tips are going to help you out but we'll try and go quiet again I'm off always looking off to the side there's a field on this side here sometimes you get road here and things coming across that so you've got to continually look and check as well as into the woodland to see if there's anything coming through because obviously animals don't just use the rides like we tend to you'll see there's a little paths coming through where animals use regularly so one advantage at this time of year is obviously you can see a long way into the woods but conversely the animals can see you from a long way from inside the wood so it swings and roundabouts really let's go silent again yeah, right this seems like a good place for a stop um, <laughs> I was going to stop at certain points along this track anyway but this has just really been forced on me one of the things that does happen and is quite frustrating but there's not a lot you can do about it and it's nobody's fault is that um, I've just had somebody walk through behind me with a dog, walking the dog, and it's it's about nine o'clock in the morning, so that's quite understandable. If you're trying to stalk wildlife, as soon as a dog walker goes through, the wildlife just disappears into the undergrowth, probably this morning never to be seen again. I'm going to keep going, I'm going to wait here for a bit and then just see if I do see anything. One of the things I was going to say is one of the reasons I like the time of year I really like to do this best is in the summer and that's simply because if I come to somewhere like Treswell Wood here um, in June I can get here at four o'clock in the morning and still have the sun coming up. Now no self-respecting dog walker is going to be out at four o'clock in the morning which means I've probably got three hours where this woodland is what I would call pristine. You've got beautiful side light, beautiful golden sunny side light. None of these paths have been walked only by wildlife. So if you're prepared to get up at that time, it really is worth it because, as I say, the only person who's going to be making the noise is you. Um, if, if you miss wildlife, if you scare it off, it's really going to be down to you. There's not going to be any dog walkers around, which is fantastic. And while the, uh, you probably can't see it, but the terrain's quite different on this section. This tends to get quite muddy. And one of the things I was going to mention is why it's useful to do this on your local patch is the fact that you know the paths intimately, you can get to know where there's bit of sections of gravel where you need to move to the side of the path, where that oak tree is that's going to drop all its acorns under the leaf litter, where you need to be extra careful. When you go to a new area, obviously none of that's known to you, so you have to be much, much careful, more careful. Um, and you tend to be much more noisy than somewhere where, that you know like the back of your hand. Right, let's go silent again and hope this dog walk has moved on and flushed something towards us. Right, so one of the things I said to you earlier is that this type of photography and this type of um, wildlife photography it is quite tiring. Um, you're not really walking long distances, but the actual mental fatigue of trying to watch where you put in your feet, look for wildlife, um, listen for wildlife, all the senses that you're using, 
um, all the multitasking that you're doing is very, very tiring. So what I'll often do is I'll, if I feel I'm starting to speed up or I'm not as concentrated as I think I ought to be, I'll stop in a place like this. Now, where I've stopped here is a T-junction. And it's just where they've piled some logs. So it's an ideal place for me to stop because I've got a good view left and I've got a good view right. So what it means is I can take a bit of a break, but I'll still remain quiet because I'm waiting for wildlife to come potentially to me. So you'll often find that, you know, wildlife will appear from out the side of the, the ride on one of its trails and might even walk towards you. This is the reason why I'm near these logs, because obviously I don't want to be sat out in the open. I want to try and hide myself away a little bit as much as I can. Um, so that any wildlife is not, I'm not just going to be stood in the middle of a T-junction and just say, oh, I'm going to have five minutes. Um, because anything that walks out onto the ride will see me, see that I'm stood on two legs, human being, and it'll run back under cover by sort of hiding myself away, but constantly keeping an eye down these lanes. I can check whether anything comes out and then it gives me another chance even though I'm resting, so I'm not having to watch where I'm putting my feet. I'm cutting down the amount of things I've got to do, basically. So I'm only sat here, physically and mentally having a break, but I can still watch for wildlife and potentially get a shot. So if you find yourself doing that, if you find you've been doing this for, say, half an hour, an hour, and you're starting to feel tired and your legs are being a little more clumsy, you're standing on more twigs and things than you were at the start, then just try and move yourself slightly off the track so that you can still see, have a good view, but that you're not having to concentrate and um, you can give yourself a little mental break and then after five minutes, 10 minutes, carry on again. Now, so that you actually get to see an image in this video, what I've done is I wanted to record this video, aeroplanes now, I wanted to record this video at home um, because there's, uh, because I know that area better than anywhere else and I know um, literally where all the roe deer are, or potentially are, and I thought I'd got a really good chance of getting some images there. And funnily enough, yes, I did. I went out two, three occasions, uh, and on one of the occasions I got this image here that I'm going to stick up now. Now, it was on a particularly foggy day, and I was stalking through the old quarry, um, and I actually saw this deer. Um, she didn't really see me, but what happened is um, I was quite out in the open so I managed to get down onto one knee um, and get the camera ready in front of my face and she obviously saw the movement must have seen the movement out the corner of her eye she spent about 30 seconds a minute going from one side to another under the undergrowth trying to weigh up what was there and it gave me the chance to get this shot which I'm over the moon with actually it really because it was a foggy day it really converted well to black and white so that just just show you what you can get by using this technique um, and when you do you know when it works out and it all works out great then it, it really does make it worthwhile and it makes that image really really special right i think that's me done for this video i'm nearly back to the car probably only done about a, a mile um, walking so i'm not physically tired i'm just mentally very very tired with all the concentration and um, it does really take it out of you what I would say with this type of photography is I wouldn't recommend that you make all your wildlife photography trips, stalking trips, and that's simply because the success rate is about 25%. I've literally seen nothing this morning. Um, yeah, so I think the phrase to keep in mind is with this type of photography, you travel in hope rather than expectation. And if you do that, you won't get go far wrong. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've picked some tips up. For those of you who are already experienced wildlife photographers please if you've got any tips for stalking wildlife um, or particular types of wildlife so things you do different for different species then please stick them in the comments below because not only does it help other people but i'm not um, opposed to stealing other people's ideas either um, <laughs> you know we're all learning all the time as i always say to you so nobody knows everything i don't know everything i can just tell you what i know and if there's things that can improve how I'm doing it, then yeah, I'll take them on board. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. Um, and if you want to see more of this content, then please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye.